So why can I water gild this pebble, but I can't water gild this steel butterfly? Now, I'm going to show you in this video exactly what water gilding is so that you can look at any object and instantly know, yes, I can water gild it, no, I can't. So what is water gilding? It's getting gold leaf onto a prepared surface with water. The water has a little bit of rabbit skin glue in, but the majority of the stick comes from actually wetting the bowl and activating all that rabbit skin glue within the bowl. Now I've made this <laughs> bit of wood just as an example. Now you've got to bear with me on this one. My hand is rabbit skin glue because rabbit skin glue is in every layer. It's in the gesso, it's in the bowl, it's in the water gilding lacquer and that all bonds together. But it has to be on a porous surface. This is to represent pores. So something like wood is porous. Now that means when my hand, the rabbit skin glue comes along, it can grip and it creates a bond. Whereas if it was something like plastic, there's no pause for it to grip on, it just sits on the surface. And eventually, within a week or so, it's just going to peel away. So there's no point in gilding that because it's all gonna go away. Now, <clears throat> I did this, I don't know, about 20 years ago because I sort of thought, I don't think you can water gild metal, but why? So, as you can see, I've gessoed this and it's already, after about a week, I think, um, it, it started to fall off. So, there's no bond there. All the gesso is bonded to itself, the bowl is bonded to itself, and the gold is bonded onto that. So, that's solid, but there was no way for the rabbit skin glue to grab this piece of metal. So, it just can't happen. So a really good way of testing this is to go, okay, a bit of wood, will water soak in? Yes, it will. So if water will soak in, the rabbit skin glue will soak in and create that bond that you need. But if you had a waxed piece of wood, that water just sits on the surface, so it won't bond. So metal water just sits on the surface. Plastic, again. Rubber, again. So, same thing with glazed ceramics. But this is terracotta inside, so that inner bit there is porous. So I could water gild that terracotta, but I can't water gild this glazed bit. So I have done some experiments over the years. This is a piece of thin card uh, with normal gesso on it. Um, and I just wanted to see how it cracked when you bend the card. Now it bonds to that card, um, the thicker card, it also bonds to that. But because gesso isn't flexible, it cracks. So anything that flexes isn't going to take the gesso, like this fabric here. Now it's attached, although it doesn't look like it, because this is cotton, it's natural, it'll absorb the water, so it'll, it'll take the gesso, but because it's flexible, it's actually going to come away. So the only way to properly gild this would be to glue the fabric onto something like wood with an animal glue, and then come along and gesso, because otherwise, if it's not glued down, you're always gonna get this flex. So you're probably then thinking, okay, if I can't use proper gesso, I'll use acrylic gesso. Now the problem with acrylic gesso is it's basically PVA based, so it's PVA with whiting. Now although PVA is water soluble, when it dries it's waterproof. So you're back to this scenario here where yes you've got some acrylic gesso on here now, but you've got to have your bowl to go on top of that and again you've now created a surface that the bowl now can't grip. So you need the bowl because of all the rabbit skin glue in there. When you come along with your gilding water, yes, there's a tiny bit of rabbit skin glue in there, but you're actually activating all that bowl. So every single layer that you're doing can't be artificial. It can't have PVA in, or there can't be a resin, or there can't be you know, anything modern, basically, anything that's been invented in the last 100 years or so. If you introduce that into this layering system, there's no bond and it's going to peel away. So just think natural. So take fabric for example. We've established you can't do it if it's flexible, but if it's stuck down, you would be wanting to use linens and silks and cottons, everything natural. If you go for something like this mesh, 
this is synthetic. So anything synthetic, you're not going to be able to uh, water gild, even if you stick that down. Because really, even if you used animal glue to stick that down, you've still got a synthetic surface that the rabbit skin glue isn't going to bond to. Now you, you're thinking, mesh, why on earth would I want to gild mesh? Now, sometimes on a picture frame, there's a texture on the background. And sometimes that's etched into the gesso, but other times it's actually lace. It's either a cotton or linen or e even silk lace underneath the gesso and it creates a beautiful pattern. But it's got to be natural because it's got to create that bond. I hope I'm really getting this across to you about the bond. We also sometimes use paper. Now we have got this Japanese uh, tissue paper and it, it tears really nicely. It's got lovely fibres in it. Now what we use this for is if there's a crack in the wooden frame or a mitre joint. This is rabbit skin glued over the top of that and because it's natural paper, the natural fibres, that will take the rabbit skin glue. So hopefully now you will be able to look at something like this pebble and go, yep, that's porous, I could water gild that. Now this poor pebble is now an indoor pebble. If this ever goes outside, all that will just wash away as soon as it rains. Even if you seal it, you're never going to be able to seal it well enough to, to stop that dissolving in the rain. So this pebble is going to sit on my shelf now for the rest of its life. So the metal, you'll never be able to do that because it will fall off. Now hopefully you can now go away and look at anything and know instantly whether you can water gild it. So think, things have to be natural, not synthetic. Your glues have to be animal glue based, not modern white glues like the PVAs. The surface just has to be porous. If the surface is porous, chances are you can then water gild it. But test it, play around, do what I did. Do it and, and try. Don't just take my word for it. Understand what's going on so that you can then instantly just look at something and go, yep, I'm going to go out and water gill my own little pebble. I think I'm going to call him Ptolemy. And it is a him.